เอทังสันทังเอทังพนิทังยาดีดังสัพบะสังขารสมาโตชาบูพัดฮีพัตินิสโกทันหักขายโอวิรากุนิโรดโนิบานัง This is peaceful. This is excellent, namely the stilling of all sankara, the relinquishment of all assets, the destruction of craving, detachment, cessation, nirvana. Namaste. So this verse is very significant. It was uttered by the Buddha immediately after his enlightenment. And so, the story of how it became was that Buddha had found this beautiful spot by the side of a river in what is now Bihar, and there was a huge bow tree growing there, and bow tree is very much esteemed by meditators because its leaf contains a substance that is very stimulating and keeps one awake. And the Buddha liked to stay awake the whole night meditating. So, after some time, he was fasting, and he became weak. And then Maya came, in the form of a cowherd girl, and gave him a pot of kheer. A kheer is a wonderful drink. It's made from cooked down milk, and cooked rice. And cooked until it falls apart. It was very thick and sweet and delicious. So the Buddha drank this kheer offered by Maya, <laughs> and this gave him the potency to overcome illusion. See, it was more than just a drink. It was a magic potion. And so Maya gave the magic potion to become enlightened. So the Buddha then spent the whole night meditating. Meditating on what? Paticca Samupada, which indicates the central position of Paticca Samupada in the Buddha's teaching. The first watch of the night. He meditated on the forward direction uh, that, as soon as there is ignorance, there are sankara, antic intentions. As soon as there are sankara, there is uh, conditioned consciousness. As soon as there's conditioned consciousness, there's name and form, in other words, the mind, and so on. So, the second part of the night, he meditated on p a t i c c a s a m u p a d a in the reverse direction. As soon as there is cessation of birth, there is also cessation of death and suffering. As soon as there is cessation of becoming. There's cessation of birth, and back, 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 all the way up the causal chain. To as soon as there's cessation of ignorance, there's cessation of sankara. And then in the third watch, he meditated on both forward and reverse direction. Then in the morning, Venus, the evening star. Morning star at that time was rising, and the the darkness of the night, symbolizing ignorance, was gradually overcome by the light of the rising sun. And in that light, the morning star disappeared. That's when Buddha attained enlightenment. 
So then he spent the next uh, seven days simply contemplating this dependent origination, paticca samupada, and trying to decide whether or not to teach. Because this is an extremely subtle, extremely powerful realization that only a Buddha can have, uh, a law that only a Buddha can discover. And he was thinking, oh, there's going to be so few people who can understand this. It's going to be a big endeavor. I don't know if it's worth it. <laughs> and finally, Brahma came, and along with the demigods, and implored him to please teach. And so he did. But the important thing here, the point here, is that as soon as Buddha realized the fading out of ignorance is also the cessation of sankhara, the ontic intentions to be or become something, somebody. At that time he attained enlightenment and spoke this verse. Nyanananda gives a very nice description of the meaning of this verse which, by the way, is the meditation topic for recollection of peace, upasamanusati. So you know the verse. This is peaceful. This is excellent. Namely, the stilling of all sankhara, the relinquishment of all assets, the destruction of craving, detachment, cessation, nibbana. It is that same peaceful, excellent state which the worldlings cannot even think of, the stilling of all sankhara. All what pertains to the six senses are sankhara. So here is the stilling of them all, sabha sankhara samato. The five aggregates of grasping are the assets built up through the six senses. And here is their relinquishment, Sabupadi Patinasago. All the aforesaid objects of the senses are the involvements for craving, and this is its destruction. Tanhak Kayo. That itself is detachment, virago, and cessation, nirodo. The cessation of the six senses, salayatana nirodo, is also implicated. Whether you call it cessation of suffering, dukkha nirodo, the cessation of the world, loka nirodo, or the cessation of the six sense spheres, salayatana nirodo, it is the same. Finally comes that extinction or extinguishment of the conflagration, nibbana. As we discussed earlier, Nibbana is an old word referring to a fire going out when it uses up its fuel. So this was the position of the Buddha when he spoke this verse. Now, in the previous videos, we have given, in brief, the method for cessation of Sankara. Briefly, one must see that they are signless, in other words, actually meaningless and non-eternal, that they are desireless. In other words, although they purport to represent a desire, they are actually not a desire. It's simply a speculation, simply imagination. And they are void. In other words, they have no real being, no real substance. They're only words. Words and symbols are not existence. They're abstractions. So, as we pointed out many times, <laughs> this world is going on only because we have a habit of making abstractions and lumping together into those abstractions aggregates of many separate things 
according to the categories that we define. Hence, in our early videos, we emphasize the role of ontology and making of categories and uh, syntactical logical relations and s triples and all of that stuff. Now you can see in our early videos. And this is where it reaches its consummation. When we gradually work our way back up the cause and effect chain to the top and ignorance is removed, then it becomes possible to still the sankara, sabha sankara samato. See, a sankara is a movement. It's a movement from the, the uh, present to the future. That I am not this thing now, but I will become it in the future. That's why it's an ontic uh, commitment. I make a promise to myself and maybe to others also that I will be, become, or do this or that in the future. So it's a movement. And it's also a tension. So another word for uh, stilling the sankharas is to relax the sankharas. Huh? Sankara nirodo. They relax. No more tension. No more polarity between the present and the future. So in this way, all of the uh, tension in the mind and also in the body is dissolved. There's no more thought of I <laughs> because that is simply a uh, aggregate of a bunch of different things which actually have nothing to do with each other which simply arise by the force of karma and dissipate in the same way. So, when I came here to the monastery about oh, a little more than two weeks ago, the uppermost thought in my mind was Sabha Sankara Nirodo. <laughs> Let me get rid of these Sankaras and see what happens. So I was studying uh, Jnanananda's books very intensely and then trying to realize it. <clears throat> what I had read. And I have to report that I was successful. Of course, when I say the word I, I'm using it in the conventional syntactical sense because the language is designed around it, but it doesn't have the same meaning <laughs> as when a putujana, an unlearned or unrealized person uses the word. Uh, they are referring to some uh, fictional entity, <laughs> some imaginary personality. Uh -huh. Was like we say in New Jersey, a poisonality. <laughs> so, when all of the sankara are gone, of course, the I is also gone, because the I is a is an entity, an abstraction, made up totally of sankara. <laughs> so, once the I is gone the separate individual poisonality, <laughs> then all the other uh, dominoes in the series of cause and effect of dependent origination fall down. It's automatic. Like a house of cards. You take out the one card in the bottom, the whole thing collapses. So this is the situation. It's hard to use language properly without saying something that actually I don't mean anymore. But this I, this separate individual, 
cannot exist without the Sankara. And I just spent like two weeks systematically getting rid of all Sankara as they would arise. So the day before yesterday, I was sitting and I had a curious reluctance to sit. But once I sat, then some very big sankaras manifested, appear, appeared themselves. And I started to systematically dismantle them like I had all the others. <laughs> and I started feeling a tremendous release of tension in my head up in the plates of the skull, especially this side and that side, and some movement in the thousand petal lotus area. And uh, there was also a release of tension, big release of tension around the jaws and the ears. So it felt like brain surgery. It felt like somebody was going in there and messing around. And it's, it had some effect. Afterwards, I was exhausted. I just fell asleep. I slept for a long time. And the next morning, I got up and, as usual, sat down. <laughs> there was nobody to meditate. <laughs> and nothing to meditate on. <laughs> so this is how it happens. Huh? Just one day, just sitting, and Maya comes and gives the key. And then by using that key, the sankharas dissipate, evaporate, huh? are seen to be void. And, and this is how one enters the void. This is the door. Until then, the, the void is always obscured by the ego. The light is always obscured. I had meant to say this several times and forgot about it, that if you're not seeing light in your meditation, you need to remove the ego. As soon as ego is removed, set aside, or whatever, then the light will come. The ego blocks the light. So the light is a very good indicator of how you're doing in meditation. Uh, use the light to measure your progress. You won't go wrong. So in this way, um, Saba Sankara Nirodho. Nirodho, by the way, is the past perfect passive subjunctive participle. And so in English it would be having been removed or having been dissolved. There's nobody to dissolve them. It just happens. It's a uh, culmination of a set of karma, karmas, which are created by making a strong resolution, sankara, to attain enlightenment, perfect, pure, and complete enlightenment, and not to give up until it happens. So now what can I say? You have the information. Your ignorance is destroyed. You have the means. Uh, just sit down anywhere and do the work. And you can attain the same thing. Now, as far as myself, <laughs> what am I going to do? I don't know. <laughs> there is a cultural sankara that when attains enlightenment and then goes out and teaches 
and tries to take over the world or something. <laughs> but um, I'm not in that mood. I really, I'm not, I, I think I just need a good uh, long uh, stay at the beach. <laughs> and then maybe it'll become obvious what to do next. But until then, sayonara. Aung tat sat. Aung harihi aung.